So I have been immersing myself in the world of cancer stem cells this week. I've been downloading loads of papers to read like at home because I've got a number of PhD and project students who are working in this field right now. Um, and it's a field that I find really exciting and I want to share with you a little bit about why. So if you were to take a tumour from a patient, this is a plastic 3D printed rendition of what a tumour might look like, and you were to separate it out into the different cells that are involved in this tumour, then you'd find it's not just cancer cells. Within that, you've got normal healthy cells. You've also got what we call stromal cells, which are kind of like support cells, like fibroblasts that help the growth of the tumour. You'll also have immune cells and you'll also have your cancer cells. But within the cancer cell population, you also have a subpopulation of cancer stem cells. Now these cancer stem cells express certain markers on the surface, so certain proteins that are expressed on the surface of the cells that make them distinct from normal cancer cells. And it's these that are really dangerous. This is what causes secondary metastases. And I want to explain a bit about why. So if you were to take a biopsy and you were to separate the tumour into the different cell types, you can then take as many as 10,000 of these normal cancer cells and put them into um, an immunocompromised mouse. So that's a, a mouse that has no immune system. We call them mute mice because they also have no hair, but the reason that they are used is because they have no immune system. 10,000 of these and you won't get a new tumour growing. But you can take as few as 100 cancer stem cells, put them into a mute mouse and you'll get new tumours growing which is why these are so dangerous. This is why these are responsible for causing secondary metastases and why years later you can then get a recurrence because they can remain dormant in your system for months, weeks, years. Um, and then they are woken up at some point and they start growing again and can seed a new tumour. Now, something else that my students have been working with at the moment is developing a model for, for culturing these in the lab. Now typically cells are cultured in dishes that look like this. They're growing flat along the surface on the inside on the flat surface of this dish and that's called two-dimensional or 2D culture and you know it's fine but and you'll find that the majority of studies that are published are done in 2D culture but they're not really very representative of what happens in the body. Whereas if you culture cells in 3D, a bit more like this, they're much more behaving much more like they would in the body. So I've got some students who culture what we call tumor spheroids. So they hang the cells off the lid of the dish and they form these little spheroids. And then after a few days, you can turn them upside down and put them into a kind of jelly-like matrix and culture them for, for longer. And what my students are doing with this is looking to see whether exercise has any impact on the growth and the invasiveness of these tumour spheroids and what cell surface markers are being expressed. So that's just a little insight into the world of my research endeavours at the moment. Um, I thought I would share that with you on the back of last week's blog post where I looked at some of the research that's been published this month. And um, thanks for listening and I'll speak to you soon.